strings that don't need no strings. Elvira, puppet mistress of the dark. Um, sorry if I seem a little strung out. I got tangled up with a string quartet last night. <laughs> so, I think I'd like to just lay down for a while uh, without somebody laying down on top of me. <laughs> la, 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 la. Uh, uh, let me just uh, uh, get comfortable. Oh, oh, oh. oh just a sec. Oh, 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 I got a cramp in my leg. There, okay. Now I'm comfortable. Whoa! whoa! Oops. Oh, hello, darling. I was just playing with myself until you got here. Uh, yes, it's me in the flesh and not much else. E M O T D. Oh, you're some piece of work. Well, I have had little body work done. On my car? Huh. Speaking of little bodies, in addition to doing puppet shows for kids, I also do bachelor parties for 21 and over. So let's get this party started up in here. This is a timeless classic that never fails to make me sick. It's a puppet masterpiece called Puppet Master. What's it about? Uh, it's about an hour and 20 minutes, but it's packed with more punchlines than Punch and Judy. It's really a knockout, so everyone, please give the puppets a big hand. And the man who brought them to life with an ancient Egyptian scroll, Monsieur Andre Toulon, a.k.a. the Puppet Master.
verstehen Sie alles, mein Herr? Es ist sehr wichtig. Ja, dann gehen wir. Andre Toulon. Herr Toulon. Yep, that's what happens when you try to take your tonsils out with a 45. Clean up on floor six. I went to Yale's undergraduate school. I was always under some graduate, but I undergraduated with honors. They even asked me to join the faculty, but I didn't want to get a staph infection. You can't say that. See something, ma'am? Oh, yes. I see many great things for you. Yeah? You have a wonderful life ahead of you, young lady. <laughs> Do you see a um, marriage, maybe? Most definitely. <laughs> In a very short period of time, you two are going to be happily married. Oh. And you are going to have a little boy. 
No. Yes, you are. He's a rambunctious little boy, oh. but he's going to be a good little boy. And then you're going to have a little girl. You know, man, that, that's really great. I like that, but, um, do you think Buddy here's ever going to get a real job? I see retail sales. What? <laughs> retail sales? No, ma'am. I'm sorry. You better look again because <laughs> Buddy here, he flunked out of the 10th grade. I don't see how it can be in retail sales. Well, you see here, I see construction. I see you working as a foreman of a construction company in a retail store, kind of like a, an enormous shopping mall. You are going to be a rich man. You are going to build a shopping mall. Wow. Yes, sir, you are going to be a rich man. <laughs> oh, maybe I will marry him then. <laughs> I sit next to a very rich man. I'm a gold mine. <laughs> well, what else do you see, ma'am? The only thing I see is your grandmother. She isn't going to be around very long. My grandmother's already dead, ma'am. Well, it's... It's really your grandmother. Oh, buddy, I'm sorry. Ma'am? <gasps> I think something's wrong with it. Ready, Carissa? Yes. Okay. Now commencing real-time thought transmission experiment, RT-638. It should read Pervert Research, Inc. Active subject, Carissa Stamford. All right, Andrea, I want you to recreate in your mind your wildest sexual fantasy, paying particular attention to the details, all right? Good. All right, Carissa? Begin sequence now. Are you getting anything about a man on a horse in the rain? No. Interesting. Now she's she's running down the beach and she's naked. He's getting very close to her. You're, you're not getting any of this. No. Why am I getting this and you're not? Because you haven't been laid in months. This little girl has a very vivid imagination. Hello. Hi, it's Alex. <laughs> Hello, Alex. We were expecting your call. Uh, you've had contact too, then? Yes, last night while we were experimenting. It was very, very strong. Well, what does it mean? Why all of us at once? It means Gallagher located the old puppet master's hiding place. And he's calling for some kind of a meeting. We also received a call from the White Witch. Oh, you mean 
Dana. Yes, the lovely Dana. She knows the location. It's an old hotel on the California coast called the Bodega Bay Inn. I want you to come along, Alex. We'll need all our collective powers. Dana feels that this is not going to be a friendly meeting. Well, I don't know who they think they are just barging in here out of the blue. They're probably the friends Neil said would come. They don't look like friends to me. They look more like trouble. That's what they look like. Shh, Teresa, don't be rude. Hello, I'm Megan Gallagher. Somebody married, Neil? Hi, I'm Alex Whitaker. I'm Frank Forrester. This is Dana Hadley and Carissa Stemford. Hello. I hope this visit wasn't entirely unexpected. No, no, Neil told me you'd be coming. And where might old Neil be? I thought you knew. Knew what? He shot himself. But why? That's the hard part. I don't know why. He left a note, but all he said was he didn't want to be buried until you all arrived. So now that you're here, we'll bury him tomorrow. If you can stay. Of course. No problem. Well, I'll show you to your rooms and then we'll see about some dinner. Excuse me, Mrs. Gallagher. Would you mind if we stayed behind a while to pay our respects? No, not at all. I think Neil would appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Don't touch the body. Frank, what the hell is going on around here? And how is it that we didn't pick up on the fact that he was dead? I don't know. Somehow he was able to block the image when he that signal to us. What are you doing? Just making sure he is what he appears to be. Charming. Be sure to check if they're dead with a meat thermometer. Yep, he's done. Dead as a doornail. Oh, he and I work together on a project. I'm a professor of anthropology at Yale University. You're staring at me. I'm sorry. It's just that uh, Neil was so obsessed with his work Hard to imagine him taking time out to get married. These rooms, they haven't been used in quite a long time. You know, people used to come here just to see this place all over. The Queen of England came here once. I took care of her myself. It's an interesting aroma. What is it? Hickory and dragon's blood. Mm. What, are you, what are you doing? I'm cleaning your etheric body. So what? This will protect you. Listen to me. Mm -hmm. You are in great danger. Do not go near the fireplace, whatever you do. Why? Just don't go near the fireplace. I, 
may have to go. I have a lot of work to do. This isn't gonna be easy. Yes, my little darling. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. I bet you're starving to death. Oh. Got you a mighty dog. And save her. Fear. What is it? She's experiencing the past. Tell me. It was horrible. What he did to her. Oh, God. Please don't bring up any of this around Mrs. Gallagher. She's upset enough as it is. You wouldn't want to disturb Mrs. Gallagher. Carissa. No, really. Two famous movie stars had a wild night in this bed. Come feel it. Stop it. This is business. We're focusing on Gallagher, remember? You know I can't help it, Frankie. I know, baby. It's just that I don't want you becoming distracted. We have to use your gifts to find out what Gallagher was doing here. <gasps> oh, my God. They did it right in this bed. Who? Clark Gable and Carol Lombard. Clark Gable and Carol Lombard. Hmm.
Did everybody get settled in all right? Yes, thank you. This hotel seems to have quite a history, Mrs. Gallagher. Yes, it does. It's been in my family since the turn of the century. My parents operated it until they died a few years ago. Thank you, Teresa. Miss Megan, we are just so curious to hear about you and your dear Gallagher. Well, I met Neil when he was staying here working on a project. We became friends, and when my parents died, he helped me through some rough times. Now, that doesn't sound like the Gallagher we all know. Anyway, it was something of a surprise to me when he asked me to marry him. I mean, I liked him a lot. He said he loved me. And he offered to help me run this hotel. Now, that sounds like Gallica. He wanted something. So we got married. Two years ago, next Friday. He had so many ideas for the hotel. He wanted to renovate it completely. So we shut it down. Well, what about his work? He didn't really tell me much about it. I knew it was important to him. I didn't want him to stop. And it seems like the first year of our marriage, he spent most of his time supervising construction all over the place. And I really tore it apart. Then, one day he just stopped everything. And for the next year, he spent almost every day locked up with his work. I really didn't know what to do. I would have kicked that bastard out on his ass. Dana. If you have something to say, I wish you would say it to me. She likes to stir things up. Don't let her bother you. Now, Alex, the lady has invited me to speak. Now, I have a wealth of information for her dear beloved Neil that I would love to share with her. Sit down and shut up. Well, aren't we the excitable one this evening? Miss Megan. There's a question that's been burning inside of me. Did it ever pass through your sweet, innocent little mind? Did your husband just possibly married you for your money? A little bit of sauce and Dana becomes quite the cynic, doesn't she? I'm not a cynic, Frank. I prefer to think of myself as a nasty bitch. That's enough, Dana. Fuck you, you Ivy League tight ass. But who's kidding who? We all know why we're here. So why continue the pitiful charade for the grave and widow? The truth is, honey, your husband was a despicable, greedy bastard. He screwed us, and we mean to even the score. I'll make myself clear. Perfectly. Oh, you're some piece of work. Did I say something? I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with her. She usually isn't like this. I'm so confused. Who are you people? Well, some would call us magicians. <laughs> to some degree, we all have unusual psychic powers. And your husband brought us together several years ago to try to help in his research. He and Frank began studying the ancient Egyptian methods of the occult. They found evidence that the Egyptians had developed the secret method of giving life to inanimate figurines. Uh, then these secrets were passed on to select few who knew and practiced magic. Dana there makes her living telling fortunes. 
She used her powers to help your husband locate the last true alchemist of modern times, a famous puppet master of the 20s. Well, what about Carissa? Well, your husband brought her in because of her skills in psychometry. <laughs> Which means? I mean, she can reconstruct the emotional history of an object by touch or feel. Like what? She can sit in a car, tell you who owns it, sit on a bed and tell you its entire history. Oh, I see. What about you? What do you do? I dream. Everybody dreams. Sure, but not about things to come. Somebody there? Play poker? What happened? She fainted. Look. Is he alive? No, he's dead. Believe me, he's dead. <sighs> Starting tomorrow, we are gonna tear this place apart. I think Andre Toulon's secret is right here. Doesn't make sense. I, if he found it, why kill himself? Yeah, who's fooling around with his body? 
Never did trust this son of a bitch. What is he up to? Hmm. Maybe it's Mrs. Gallagher who's up to something. That wasn't a dream I had, was it? I don't understand. Who would do that? Well, we think it was Teresa. Teresa? Where is Teresa? <laughs> we can't find her. We've looked all over. Hey, hey, take it easy. Why did you come here? I had to. Why? I had this dream and I came here to make sure it didn't come true. wrong two women navy second world war and details they spent their entire leave in this tub listen darling as long as you're going to be fooling around in there see if you can pick up on neil gallagher and that young wife of his of course <laughs> Uh, no, honey. It's pronounced unpleasant dreams. What are you doing, Frank? Preparing for tonight's experiment. Suppose we found it, Frank. What Andre Toulon's discovered, I mean. What would you do with the power? If you had it, I mean. Well, that's easy. I'd rule the world. You think she's pretty? Gallagher's wife, I mean. I just wanted to get you into that haunted house mood for tonight's work. What are you doing? We're all in danger. He means to kill us all. 
Who does? Gallagher. Honey, even the dead have their ways. Protection. More like infection. Thanks. December 8th, 1.46 a.m. Researcher and principal psychometric subject are about to embark on sexual experiment number 517A. Hopefully we'll be opening up a channel to Neil Gallagher. Experiment will utilize various sexual aids and certain assorted apparatus. Descriptions to follow. Sidebar note to transcriber. File under personal documentation and be sure to annotate the location. Are you ready? Ready and willing. Be gentle. Oh, I love it when you do that. God, I like this. No, no. Not this time. You don't get to do anything but what I want you to do. Oh, great. Uh, he can't come to the phone right now. He got tied up at work. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Oh. Mm. I think I'm gonna like this. <clears throat> Life insurance from the White Witch. Four hours. It's not gonna be promising for you know who. Uh, hey lady, your dog is smoking. This is gonna be a long and lonely night, sugar.
never did get used to those two. Sounds like she's having some dental work done. Okay, now just rinse and spit. Undisclosed sexual aids, huh? What is that? Good. <laughs> Carissa, stop that! Carissa! I you're hurting me! Carissa, stop it! Give it a rest. 
with me? Yes, I am. Well, it would be an awful lonely trip if you had come along. <laughs> what are you doing sneaking around this time of night? Well, Frank and Carissa are trying to rearrange the walls in the room. Makes it hard to sleep. <laughs> I know what you mean. Would you like to come in for a little nightcap? Thanks, but... He's allergic to dogs, especially blondes. I was hoping we could do a little rearranging of the walls ourselves. I, I don't think that'd be a good idea, Dana. No? No. I tried. Good night. <clears throat> Sweet dreams. It's unpleasant dreams, okay? It's just me and you, Leroy. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll just have to entertain each other like we always do, Leroy. I know you don't like Alex very much, but he's all right. Now, you just sit down, and you stay like a good boy. Yeah. Hmm. Well, look who's here. If it is my dear old friend, Gallagher. Didn't I see her in a local production of A Streetcar Named Desire? And you don't fool me. I know what you're about. At least she's not blowing it up your ass like I would have. We put the dead to rest. Uh, he won't be bothering us anymore, Leroy.
me a sock puppet, get it? Alex, wake up. Alex? Yeah. Just a second. I want you to come with me. I have something I want to show you. Just uh, let me get my shoes. And don't forget your rubbers. Neil's death kept on bothering me. It never occurred to me before that there was a connection between the old puppet master's death and my husband, but after dinner, it began to make sense. Neil used to spend hours up here. I don't know what he was doing exactly, but he never let me come up. I thought it was strange. I didn't really mind it. I, I came up here earlier, and I found something in here. Would you hold that, please? I want to show you something. Now, 
Now promenade. Now Alaman left. No, your other left. Now spin your corpses, do si do Ladies on your tippy toes. Can't save her, Alex. <laughs> Stop! Wake up! I want you to come with me. What for? I have something to show you. Uh, yeah. Let me get my shoes. Okay, wait a minute. Didn't she just, uh... I mean, this is like a room with a deja vu. It never occurred to me that there was a connection between the old puppet master's death and my husband's. But after dinner, it started to make sense. Neil used to spend hours up here. I don't know what he was doing exactly, but he never let, let me come. let you come up. You thought it was strange, but you didn't really mind. How did you know? Well, I'm kind of a magician, remember? <laughs> I came up here earlier tonight, and I found something in here. Andre Toulon's diary. Listen to this. Today I gave them life using the ancient Egyptian rites of afterlife. I, I love them like all my other children, like my other puppets, they mirror the soul of their master, and with me they are harmless, but I fear what they are capable of if placed in the wrong hands. <sighs> What's wrong? Uh, Alex. Uh, Alex, what is it? Hello, Alex. Bye, Alex. Uh, are you okay? Uh, Alex. Come on. Let's go.
Alex. They're in the dining room. You're not leaving on my account, are you? You're dead. I put a gun in my mouth and blew away my vast knowledge. And here I am, dead. Uh, Megan doesn't understand the metaphysics of it, Alex. Will you explain it to her, please? What's the matter, Alex? You're not getting slow on me, are you? Let me explain. Metaphysically speaking, I killed myself. And using the techniques of the old puppet master, I brought myself back to life. Why? That's easy. I want to live forever. All life eventually ends in death, but for me, there is no end now. You mean no natural end? Alex. Don't even entertain the thought. It would take the total destruction of this body, something that you are not capable of. I'm much stronger now than I ever was in life. Why did you kill them? Why? Because we are all joined by our thoughts. And sooner or later, one of you would have learned that I had discovered Toulon's secrets. I had to bring you here. Besides, I'm tired of experimenting with silly little wooden puppets. I wasn't the first human experiment. The first experiment was on her parents. It was a stroke of luck, actually. I followed the trail of the old puppet master to this hotel. And I was always quick with the women. Right, Alex? Hmm? And Megan, ah, oh, she was so young. So easy to win over. <laughs> Parents, it was another story. I had no choice but to kill them. It was a small price to pay to live forever. Bastard!
Do the same thing with my Barbies.
Well, uh, my cab's waiting. You take care of yourself. Yeah, I will. You too. I'll take care of that too. Uh -huh. And uh, if you ever get to the east, give me a call. Doug, Leroy. You don't suppose she's gonna... Ah! Oh, boy, never saw that coming. Well, I guess that was a happy ending. At least till they made nine more sequels. Puppet Master 2, Puppet Master 3, Puppet Master 4, Toulon's Revenge, Puppet Master 5, The Final Chapter, Puppet Master 6, Curse of the Puppet Master. Ah! Uh, let me go! Ah! Ah! <laughs> Hey, come back here, you little perv! Whoa, let go of me! Jeez, those puppets are still pissed off because they were only paid one sixteenth scale. <laughs> oh, good. Ah! 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 Oh, 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 man, that was so weird. I just had this dream within a dream. What the? Hello? Oh, where did I put my keys? <laughs> oh, dude, that was really weird. I just had this dream within a dream within a dream. But fortunately, they were all unpleasant dreams.
Thank you.